Welcome, my brothers and sisters, to this edition of Bringing You Information as it pertains to voting in the 2020 election. As we know, where there is no vote, there is no voice. We want to bring information that we know in the media. There has been a lot of information about absentee voting and, and mail-in vote. And we want to make sure that you are getting the right information so that your vote and your voice will count. I have today one of our members, uh, Brother Jerome Harris, which is also uh, the president of our brotherhood here, brotherhood ministry here at First Baptist Church and a member of the James Island Social Action Committee, which is composed of several members from several different organizations and churches here on the island of James Island. Brother Harris, um, I want to first say thank you for being here. My pleasure. And doing the necessary research. I know that this is something that you are very, very passionate about. And, and we thank you for coming and sharing your opportunity with us, this opportunity with me and our congregation and those who are listening, just to simply set the record straight right. on what we need to know as it pertains to casting our vote. Um, the first thing would be to ask you, are you registered to vote? And if you're not, how, how could you be? Well, Pastor, in order to be eligible to vote on November 3rd, which is election day, yes, sir. you need to be registered by October 4th. So by October 4th, you must be registered to vote in order to vote in this election. That's correct. And there are several ways that you can first check to see whether or not you're registered to vote. Mm -hmm. You can call the county registrar's office at 843-744-8683. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and ask, or you can go on scvotes.gov. Mm -hmm. Right, put in your name, uh, your address, and it'll pop up and show whether or not you're registered at your current location. So let me ask you this, brother, uh, brother Harris, because I I know that that there are some that that only vote around presidential elections. Don't vote in none of the primaries. Don't vote in none of the local elections. If they have not voted since Obama, mm -hmm. how is how is how much important is that? Well. Um, if you have not voted, and there are a lot of us who haven't voted <laughs> since uh, Obama's election, um, the you are on you are one of thirty thousand people. So it's not you, right? Who are on the inactive list? They can't take you off the roll, but you are in an inactive category. Mm -hmm. So if you go in and check, mm -hmm. right, calling that number that I gave, or going online, uh, and you popped up as inactive, right then and there, you can be activated. Right then and there. Right then and there. As long as you do it before. As long as you do it before October 4th. October 4th. That's correct. So that person who has not voted since Obama cannot show up to the precinct and say, I want to vote on, on November, in November. And they won't, they may be able to vote. They may be allowed to vote mm -hmm. by a, a, a provisional ballot, provisional. but there's no guarantee that that, that vote will be, will be counted. counted. If you want to guarantee that your vote is counted, you must register before October 4th, mm -hmm. all right, and cast the ballot on November 3rd or absentee prior to, to that. Uh, 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 prior to that day. Okay. okay. And that's what I wanted to make sure of. Um, the other thing is that, you know, we've been hearing in the news about um, the absentee ballots and, and the mailing it in and if you mail it in, requesting an application and it be mailed to you. Can you give me a little bit more information about how exactly is that, does that process work? Okay, so the state has established the law that says anyone mm -hmm. can vote absentee. Right, so there's no reason that you have to give. You can say, I want an absentee ballot. But yeah. in order to get an absentee ballot, mm -hmm. you have to do one of several things. Okay. One, you can call again, 843-744-8683, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and request to be sent an application 
for an absentee ballot? So the first thing is to request an application for an absentee ballot. So don't think that we're going to call in and ask for them to send an absentee ballot. No, it's an application. You must first get an application, fill it out. And mail it in. And mail it back to the Board of Elections. That's Board correct. of Elections. Using your stamp. And you provide your own stamp. Your own stamp. Okay. All right. Once you send that application in, you will then be mailed mm -hmm. a, a, a ballot, right, which you then will have to fill out, mm -hmm. okay, and you can submit back in the mail, or there are several locations beginning uh, October 5th that you can drop, drop them off. Important thing to remember, though, and you were talking about the, the notion of wait to the last minute. Yes. You can't wait to the last minute. You can't decide on uh, October 29th that you want to vote by mail, send in a applica absentee application, expect yes. to get it back and get it get it in. Yes, because we all know that sometimes meal can turn into snail meal. That's right. That's and especially right. now, during this pandemic of all that's going on, we really realize we're seeing here, right here in the Low Country, things that would normally take a next day delivery, two and three days. That's correct. Um, in delivery, right. and so he who fails to plan, plan to fail. Absolutely. And so instead of hesitating or procrastinating, him, which some of us are masters at, call now, request an application now, send it in or have it ready to drop off at one of these necessary That's correct. ballots. And, and again, the application has to be sent in to the Board of Election yes. for you to get the, the actual ballot Ballots. back. The ballot can be mailed in, okay, or you can take it to one of several locations mm -hmm. that will be across the, around the county uh, where, after, you can drop, where we can drop them off. After October 5th. After October 5th. Okay, okay. And all of this information we will um, put up on our church website and as well tag it along in this interview so that you can also, my brothers and sisters, get all of this accurate information as well. Uh, beginning beginning um, October 5th, there are several locations where we can drop off the absentee ballots okay. and even start voting absentee vote. That's correct. So um, if you want to vote absentee, mm -hmm. you might even call that early voting. Early vote. Yeah, you can go beginning October 5th mm -hmm. uh, to the county board of election site, which is the headquarters up on Leeds, uh -huh. uh, or to the North Charleston Convention Center. Uh -huh. And that'll begin on, the, on, on October 5th. On October 5th. Right. At the convention center. At the convention center. Okay. Right. You can bring your absentee ballot there. Uh, and they will also be those will also be re remote voting locations where you can actually vote on the machine. Beginning October nineteenth, there will be three additional sites. Okay. All right, where you can drop off or turn in your ballot, your mm -hmm. absentee ballot. Uh, Seacoast Church on Long Point Road, uh, Seaco Seacoast Church on Savannah Highway, yeah. and the main library downtown. They will be open from 8.30 to 5 p.m. as alternative voting locations beginning October 19th and be open until November 2nd, which is the day before the election. Okay, so early and voting turns ends November 2nd. November 2nd. Everybody else will then have to vote the next day in line. That's correct. Okay, all right. Now let me ask you this. What, what are documents you're going to need um, to cast your vote, whether you're doing absentee, I mean early voting, or on November 3rd? Well, when you show up to, if you're voting in person, you'll have to show a South Carolina driver's license, mm -hmm. a um, motor vehicle um, ID, mm -hmm. or a uh, federal military ID, or U.S. passport. Any of those, any one of those documents, yes. you don't need multiple documents to do. Mm -hmm. So you just need an ID, a government issued ID, picture ID. Picture ID. Okay. That's right. So that's exactly what we need to know. Right. How is it important? All elections are important. And, and we should never under, uh, underestimate or miscount or misguide 
uh, our opportunity to vote. How no important is your vote? Well, uh, it's critical. In this, in this particular election, those of us here in Charleston County have the opportunity to vote on a public question that will allow um, additional money to be raised mm -hmm. for affordable housing. We will also have the opportunity to elect people to serve to fill seats on the Board of Education. Yeah. All right. Those are elections that you don't see no advertising about. All right. No, but, they, but they are important. And they directly affect us. Impact, impact. That's correct. Our and, community. In addition to that, the sheriff is on the ballot, the coroner is on the ballot. All right. And that's way before you get to yes. questions of uh, who the congressman is or the U.S. senator or the president. Exactly. Those lower decisions, those lower office holders, have as much effect or more effect on what happens to us every day than the top the top of the ticket. I'm, I'm an avid voter, and I try to vote every election. Um, um, you can have a dog running for something. I'm going to go out and vote because my grandparents always instilled in me, son, you go out and you vote. People died for you to vote. People made sacrifice. And and so even with me, um, as a as a I guess I can consider me still a millennial, I guess. Uh, I'm on the end of okay. it, but uh, I sometimes, even with that, get anxiety of, of going in the poll. And so for some people, it can be intimidating, even though they still have that notion to go in and cast your vote. What are some things that you would suggest to them to, to do before entering, before entering, before entering, mm into the pool. Excellent question. I, I think first of all, as we should do before we do everything, we should pray. Come on now. We should pray. Talk right. right. And and also kind of relax. Mm -hmm. Um the the idea of looking at the ballot, who's on the ballot, kind of familiarizing yourself yes. with it before beforehand. Uh and um I hope that we're able to attach a copy of the of uh, how to use a machine? Yes. Uh, to this, uh, there. If you're voting in person, uh, there's a new uh, automated the, machine. That's yes. Different. So we're dealing with new machines this year. Absolutely. So be coming, checking out the video. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and seeing how to use the machine. Uh, looking at the ballot. All yes. right. Relaxing, taking a deep breath. Don't rush yourself. Yeah. All right. And if you remember back. Uh, when South Africa first uh, got its freedom, mm -hmm. right? We saw lines, long oh, lines miles. of people, all yes. right, standing in lines for hours to vote. So be prepared and take this as, you know, you are, this is a, and some people are talking about protesting and yes. thinking about change. Our vote is an opportunity for us to have our voice, voice heard yes. and a very powerful protest, but in a powerful affirmative protest to make a difference. And as you said, powerful. I want us to, I'm going to inject here too, let us also remember, brothers and sisters, that as we prepare ourselves to go out and get ready, our seniors that are in nursing homes, that are still in their right mind, um, they still have a voice. Absolutely. You still can fill out an application. We still can do a ballot for them and have them cast their ballot. Um, by simply doing the same thing as you do it for yourself, those of you that, that are caregivers. Let's not just automatically not get their vote counted. That's important. Because a lot of nursing homes, uh, people that's confined in these um, institutions or uh, facilities, do n never get their vote counted. That's, ab that's absolutely true. And I, and I think, you know, in a, in a special kind of way, you know, you talk about um, us getting motivated and mm -hmm. becoming prepared. Um, we should uh, think about this as an important rallying cry. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're isolated, uh, we're social distancing uh, and, and the like, but this is an opportunity. Now we don't, we all, won't all come together mm -hmm. at the same time to vote, right? But this can really be, excuse me, Pastor, cat meeting. Yes, right? sir. Cat yes, meeting sir. at the ballot box. Mm -hmm. That's right. And a, and, a, and a powerful cat meeting to make powerful changes. Yes, sir. Because as we always say, where, where there's much prayer, much power, little prayer, little power, no prayer, no power. And the same thing applies for our right in voting. Absolutely. Where there's much voting, there is much power. Amen. And where there are no shows, 
others will remain in power. Yes, sir. And so, Brother Harris, I want to thank you again for taking the time, the opportunity to bring us these important information and facts that we need to hear, that, that we are in dire need of hearing. You brought more clarity to me because I was all mixed up and confused about this meal and the, them going back and forth. And, and it was so clear about first requesting an application, then receiving an application ballot, sending it back in, and then being able to cast your vote by mailing it in or dropping it off to one of the designated places. Absolutely. And so, um, any words you want to give the people for encouragement on today? Well, and um, don't worry about all of the numbers and information because what we're going to do, we're going to connect now the, a video of those new machines. Do you want to elaborate on that as we go to a closing? Sure. So the uh, both the county and multimedia channel five and two and, and others have put out video. So it's a very clear video mm -hmm. on on how to use the new machine. Yeah. And again, I urge folks to take a look take a look at that. Um, but as as we've been talking, I keep thinking uh, back to uh, uh, Paul's uh, letter. Uh, to Timothy where he says uh, when we talk about being fearful about voting yes. uh, where he says God has not given us a spirit of fear but a spirit of power and love and a sound mind and that's yeah. what we should be going into this this voting period thinking about. Amen. 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 Thank you again. Um, please watch the video. It's a very short video that we're going to attach. All of us need to take time and watch this video before we cast our ballot we are dealing with new voting machines this year. And my brothers and sisters, he who failed the plan, plan to fail. Let's not get caught off guard and go in those polls and push the wrong buttons and then be mad with other people when we didn't take our time to do our own due diligence. So let's do this, my brothers and sisters, until we meet again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and God bless you. So in South Carolina, you'll be able to vote almost the exact same way you have been able to do in the past. You'll bring your photo identification to the polls. Our poll workers will check you into the voting system as they've done for years. The only difference will be the machines that you use. So as you come to vote as a voter, you will receive a ballot card, which will be different than what you had to get in the past. But what you'll do is the corner cut on this card matches the corner cut on our machine. You place the ballot into the machine and then the screen will come up with your ballot. That will be very similar to what you've experienced in the past. You'll just simply touch on the screen to make your selections and as you go through all of those selections when you get to the very end of your ballot you'll have a chance to review that's those selections and be able to make any changes. If you have to make any changes, it will take you straight back to that office. If you don't have any changes and are satisfied with your ballot, you can hit next and then print card to print your card. When you print that ballot card, you'll be able to see on that ballot card as well the selections that you made on the voting machine. Once you verify that those selections are correct, then you can take those selections over to the scanner. So as you get your ballot from the voting machine, you have not completed voting until you place this ballot into the scanner. So you simply place the ballot into the scanner and the screen will let you know that your ballot has been cast. And then you can get your I voted sticker and go on your way.